Luke 15 1-32, through the Bible. Chapter 15. Theme, Parable of the Lost Sheep, Parable of the Lost Coin, Parable of Two Lost Sons. Now we come to probably the best-loved parable that our Lord told, we call it the parable of the prodigal son. The background for this parable is that the publicans and sinners came in to hear the Lord Jesus by multitudes. The Pharisees and scribes began to murmur, to criticize him because of this. They were scandalized that he would receive them and even eat with them. His answer to the murmuring of the Pharisees and scribes is a parable. Customarily it is called three parables, the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, and the parable of the lost son. Actually, it is three parts of one parable, it is three pictures in a single frame. When I was a youngster, I used to visit my aunt, and I remember seeing a picture called a triptych, which she kept in the attic, that's where she let me sleep when the house was filled up with relatives. I like to look at that picture because it was three pictures in one frame. This is what our Lord gives us here, three pictures that belong together. It is a triptych. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners, and eateth with them, Luke 15 1-2. I can't resist telling the story of a little girl who heard the reading of this verse. On a cold London night, she stepped, shivering, into the shelter of a church where a service was in progress. After the service, when the congregation had gone, she approached the rector, Sir, I never knew my name was in the Bible. He smiled, Well, little girl, what is your name? My name, she answered excitedly, is Edith. Oh, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but Edith does not appear in the Bible. She insisted, Yes, it does. I heard you read it tonight. It said, Jesus receiveth sinners, and eateth with them. Certainly our Lord receives Edith, and Mary and John, and all the rest of us. Thank God, He does receive sinners. Parable of the Lost Sheep Now in this wonderful parable we see the first picture, that of a lost sheep. And He spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons, which need no repentance, Luke 15 3-7. The shepherd in this parable is the great shepherd, Jesus Christ. We are the sheep. He had 100 sheep, and one of them got lost. Frankly, that would be a pretty good percentage, to start out with 100 sheep and end up with 99. This shepherd, however, would not be satisfied with just 99 sheep. When one sheep got lost, he went out and looked for it. When he found it, he put it on his shoulders, the place of strength. He is able to save to the uttermost. The high priest of the children of Israel wore an ephod. On the shoulders of the ephod were two stones. On them were engraved the names of the twelve tribes, six tribes on one stone and six on the other. The high priest carried the children of Israel on his shoulders. Our great high priest carries us on his shoulders, and we will not become lost. When he starts out with 100 sheep, he will come through with 100 sheep, not 99. This is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, out looking for those who are his own. Parable of the Lost Coin The second picture in this triptych is that of the lost coin. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it? And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth, Luke 15 8-10. The coin was probably part of the row of coins which formed a headpiece, signifying her married state. To lose a part of it was like losing a stone out of one's wedding ring. The woman depicts the Holy Spirit whose ministry is to make sure that each one who belongs to the bridegroom will be present for the wedding. Every coin will be in place. Every one is valuable to him. Parable of Two Lost Sons As I mentioned previously, Dr. Luke, a medical doctor and a scientist, was also an artist. And he is the one who records our Lord's glorious parables which no other gospel writer gives us. And he said, A certain man had two sons, 
Luke 15 11. Immediately our Lord begins to put the background on the canvas. And I see a lovely home, because this will represent the home of the Father, the Heavenly Father, and it's a glorious home. It's a home that is all of the comforts and all of the joys and all of the love that ever went into a home. In that home there's the certain man, and that is God the Father. And this father had two sons. He has more sons than that, but these are representative, you see. One of these boys is called the elder and the other is called the younger. We see the lovely home, and out in front there stand the father and two boys. Now let's watch our Lord put some more in the picture for us. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living, Luke 15 12-13. Here in this lovely home, a home in which there was everything in the world that the heart of man could want, love, joy, fellowship, comforts, this younger boy does a very strange thing. He says, I'm tired of the discipline. I don't like it here. I'd like to stretch my wings. I've been looking over the pasture, and the grass over in the other field looks to me like it's lots greener. And I do not know why that's true, but to you and me the grass in the next pasture always looks greener. The boy looked out from home and said, if I could only get away off yonder on my own, it would be wonderful. He didn't like it at home, he fell out with his father and lost fellowship with him. And so the father gave to him his living, and the boy left with his pockets full of money, which he did not earn with work that he'd done himself. Every bit that came to him, his father had given to him. He didn't get it by his ability, he didn't get it because he was clever, and he didn't get it because he had worked hard. The money he had in his pocket was there because he had a very generous father. And so the boy starts out for the far country. Now our scene shifts, and we've got to put in another picture here, and the picture is the far country, you can paint it any way you want to. May I say to you, you can paint it in lurid colors, and many have attempted to paint it that way. I do not think it's exaggerated to paint it in lurid colors. This boy found out, what it was to have, what the world calls, a good time. He made all of the nightclubs, he knew cafe society, he had money. And when you have money, you can get fairweather friends. For a time he lived it up. He enjoyed the pleasures of sin for a season, there in the far country. You paint your own picture there. Our Lord didn't put in any details of what the boy did. But we can well imagine some of the things that he did. However, there did come a day when he'd finished living it up, he reached into his pocket and there wasn't anything left. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want, Luke 15 14. Not only is he in a very bad way financially, but the country is also in a bad way. You see, in that country where he thought the grass was greener, the grass has now dried up. They're having a famine in that land, and this boy does not know what to do. If you want to know the truth, he's afraid to go home. He should not have been afraid, but he was afraid to go home. Now he's desperate. He is so desperate that he's going to do something that no Jew would ever have done unless he'd hit the bottom. This boy has hit the bottom. He can't get a job. He goes around to see some of these fairweather friends, and he says, Bill, do you remember how you used to come to the banquets I gave, and the dinners, and that I always picked up the check and I paid for the liquor, and I paid for the girls? Do you remember that? Now I'm in a bad way. I wonder if you couldn't tide me over or maybe you could give me a job. And the fairweather friend says, I'm sorry. You say you've lost all your money? Well, I'm through with you. I'm not interested in you anymore. My secretary will show you to the door. And the boy found, after going from place to place, that he didn't have any real friends in the far country. Finally he ended up by going out to the edge of town where there was a man who was raising pigs, and you could tell it a mile away. And the boy went over to him and said, I'd like to have a job. The man says, well, I can't pay you. You know, we're having a lot of difficulty, but if you can beat the pigs to it, you can eat here at least. That's exactly the point to which he had sunk. And when our Lord said that this man would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, every Israelite, both Pharisee and publican, who was listening to him that day, winced because a Hebrew couldn't go any lower than that, he was to have nothing to do with swine, the Mosaic law had shut him off from them, but to stoop to the place where he'd go down and live with them was horrifying. That's the picture, and it's a black picture. You see, this boy has hit the very bottom. Somebody is immediately going to say, well, 
this is the fellow who is a sinner, and he is going to get saved. No, I'm sorry to tell you that such is not the picture that's given to us here. This is not the picture of a sinner that gets saved. May I say to you, and say it very carefully, that when this boy was living at home with the father, and was in fellowship with him, he was a son, and there was never any question about that. When this boy got to the far country and was out there throwing his money around, he was still a son. That is never questioned. And when this boy went down and hit the bottom and was out there with the pigs, and if you'd been a half mile away looking over there among the pigs, I don't think you could have told him from a pig, he was not a pig, he was a son. In this story that our Lord told there was never any question as to whether the boy was a son or not. He was a son all the time. Somebody says, then this is not the gospel. Yes, it is the gospel also. And I will hold to that for the very simple reason that an evangelist in southern Oklahoma many years ago, used this parable to present the gospel. People said he imitated Billy Sunday, but I had never heard of Billy Sunday, so it didn't make any difference to me whom he imitated. He was a little short fellow, holding services under a brush arbor. And the thing that interested us boys was the fact he could jump as high as the pulpit. He'd just stand flat right there and up he'd go, a little short fellow. And we'd sit out there and watch him, and the next day we'd practice to see if we could jump that high. May I say to you, one night he preached on the prodigal son, and that's the night I went forward. Don't tell me the gospel is not there. It is there. However, let's understand what the parable is primarily about. The parable is not how a sinner gets saved, it reveals the heart of a father who will not only save a sinner but will also take back a son that sins. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him, Luke 15 15-16. Maybe you thought a moment ago I was exaggerating when I said his fairweather friends wouldn't help him. Our Lord made it very clear that they wouldn't help him, no man gave unto him. Why is it today that Christians sometimes get the impression that the man of the world is really his friend, when he's trying to lead him into sin and lead him away from God? Well, believers do get that impression. This boy got that impression also. He was being led away from home, from his father, farther and farther away. And he thought these folks were his friends. Now we don't have any letters that he wrote back to some of his friends at home. But if we had one, I think that it would have said, say, you ought to come over here. You know, there are some real people over here where I am. I tell you, I'm having a big time. You ought to come over. But, may I say to you, the day came when he found out these were not his friends. No man gave unto him. Now that's the black part of the picture, and I think it's about time for us to see some of the bright colors our Lord painted into the picture, for our Lord always, always put down a black background and then put the bright colors in the foreground of the picture. Have you ever noticed that God paints that way? And so, on the black background of this boy's sin, down in the pig pen, out of fellowship with his father, having left home in a huff, our Lord begins to put the bright color. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. Luke 15 17. He came to himself. Sin does an awful thing for us. It makes us see the world incorrectly. It makes us see ourselves in the wrong light. It makes us see the pleasures of this world in the wrong perspective, and we just don't see clearly when we're in sin. This boy, when he was at home, looked out yonder at the far country, and it all looked so good, the grass was so green, and the fun was so keen, but now he came to himself. And the first thing he did was a little reasoning. He began to use his intelligence. He said, you know, I'm a son of my father, and here I am in a far country. I'm down here in a pig pen with pigs, and back in my father's home the servants are better off than I am, and I'm his son. When he began to think like that, he began to make sense. And this young man now acts like he's intelligent. 